Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So now let's talk a little bit about composition. So I did a couple quick layouts and you know this is generally how I'll rough something out, right? Get a character in place, some kind of idea of the background, and you know, and that's it. And then I'll work out from there. So here I've got like a downward two-point perspective. I've got a little bit of a crooked horizon line, and then the character's just flying up. And then I would do something uh, so, you know, I do something at the top to kind of figure out, like, this is just this blank shape up here, right? Well, I could utilize that as well to kind of point to the character. I could do something with the clouds and have them taper in. You know, not not so dramatically, but um, kind of have it flow through the character's head, which would lead you down here. So, a lot of this is just basically getting shapes that look pleasing to the eye. Uh, generally from a distance I think is a good way to do it but then um, let me just show you how to work through a couple of these so first I like to get in a little bit of grid lines just kind of throw those in real quick I'm holding shift there they're not perfect but they uh, give me some reference point to get my characters to not look too slanted or whatever now I generally will soft erase that back just a little and then draw over top so with this next one, uh, I'll do another one where characters uh, kind of flying up, but I'm gonna have us looking up at the character a little more. So I'm gonna draw in some real quick perspective lines like this, just for a reference point. And then I just need to think about the pose. Uh, I can, you know, do that off to the side a little, um, real small if I wanted to. Say, well, the character's jumping up, their arms are tucked back, you know, chest is kind of bowed out. One leg's up, one leg's back, they're looking down. Okay, I don't know if you can really discern that, but uh, what it really is is like mental notes that I'm doing when I do that. So it's not that I'm trying to draw that real, you know, uh, discernible to anybody but myself. So essentially when I draw it here, uh, I still want to think primitive and... and uh, uh, I want to draw through it really fast because if not, I'll lose the energy for it. So let me just kind of throw it in with real basic shapes. I do want to show the perspective that we're really looking up at the torso. So I want to get that in rather quickly. That idea anyways. And that leg coming up. We can start to see the bottom of the uh, femur area. Upper leg area this leg back down here the lower leg here and the head looks a bit weird but that's fine I, you know avoid like being overly critical as I as I criticize it as I'm doing this it's kind of natural but you kind of have to try to avoid that and then arms tucked back I think that'll look kind of dynamic or overly dramatic and I need to get more curve so I probably need to bring this leg well, the joys of digital here. I need to just bring this leg right back. And I almost feel like a touch smaller, but I'm kind of fighting that urge because I, I think that, you know, it being larger is going to really carry that foreshortening. So I'm going to stay away from making that any smaller. I am encroaching on the side of the canvas, so I need to grab the character, scale them back. Fist in here, forearm here. I don't want the arms to be exactly the same, so I'll purposely move this one a little higher. That foot's crooked. But you know what, here, let me just throw it in with a primitive shape. Leg back, bent back. Okay, so just to get the idea working. Okay, so something like that. So now we've got this pose of this character. We know that we're roughly looking up at him. And, and you know, we can see areas where, like, the bottom of the leg, as I refine the torso, it'll all kind of confirm that. But uh, it's, it's a lot easier to just say, well, as soon as we put... Um, I'm just going to throw it in for the quick representation, but... As soon as we put a couple buildings like this, 
it really reinforces that pose, right? So again, this is where that composition can really help you. So I can, and I can really take that as far as I need to. I can make some of these buildings very uh, small by comparison. And I can make him look like he's, you know, closer to us and all that's pushed way back. Obviously, there's a lot of dynamics that we can do just with the scale relationship. Um, and then, let's see, I mean, you could, you know, you could draw a plane up here and you're seeing the bottom of the plane. I mean, you wouldn't want that to go right with um, perspective anyways. But you could do little tricks like that to reinforce that, that up view. That everything that you're looking at, <laughs> it's a horrible plane. Uh, but you get what I'm saying. Like everything that you do reinforces that uh, that perspective. But as far as the composition of it, um, you know, right now t what it feels like to me is that everything is just kind of going up like this, right? And that's and and I could probably take the buildings even further and really you know distort them out and really push some of these lines to point right up towards the character with a three-point perspective. So, in fact, it would, yeah, I'm sorry, it would be a three-point perspective anyways. A two-point wouldn't make as much sense. But I guess that's a good opportunity to show you how, uh, how a three-point does really influence a shot like this. So now all of a sudden, if we turn these buildings into a three-point, so all these lines converge up, you find a vanishing point up here. Remember that if you triangulate the vanishing points, and keep your artwork inside there, you're not going to get the distortion. Uh, you get more distortion when you try to do something like, you know, you're trying to draw a building out here. Well, you can't, you, know, you can't even do it. I mean, you can do it, but it looks weird. It's distorted. Uh, but if it stays, rel um, if you keep your picture plane inside this area, just talked about this the other day on a live stream, but I'll reiterate it, uh, then generally you get a lot better um, illustration with less, less uh, distortion. So anyways, you get these vanishing points in the right place, your, your perspective lines converging to those, and then all of a sudden it reinforces the flow and direction that you're looking up at this character. And then after you work all that out from that distance, you know, you can get, I always tell people, try to get as many of those little details as you can, get the clouds and get some little birds and whatever you're going to do to make this scene look the way you want it, some rolling smoke down here from some chaos and destruction, whatever, burning building, whatever you're doing, draw it in, even at this stage, very loosely, very, very rough and crazy looking, it doesn't matter. It, it does so much more for you. It's like you can then let go of that part of your way of thinking and just start to have fun. So when you soft erase this, um, and me working digitally, I try to slowly um, zoom in. Because if I zoom in right here, I mean, for one, look how crazy that looks, but... Uh, it, it seems to be too much too soon, so I'll, I'll try to work it from a little bit at this distance. And even at this stage, as I often say, I'm not overly critical. I'm still, I'm still using my searching lines to figure this stuff out. Uh, mainly because I don't always know going in, like, have I, have I drawn a leg from this exact angle? I don't know. Will I remember today? I don't know. <laughs> I might need to pull reference, you know. So I don't get too critical too soon because then that kind of frustrates me and hinders me I just kind of throw in what I what I think I know and I'll definitely stylize and fake my way through it uh, in a lot if I can you know if I can if I can make it look cool even though it's not correct anatomy or even correct anything uh, I will do that I mean it's comics so to me I feel like that's part of the fun like it's a creative uh, jigsaw puzzle and if you can make it work without having to stop and pull reference and that's that's a win in my mind but um but you know work through what you can stop and go to something else if you feel yourself uh hitting that road that or that uh not road <laughs> road block if you find yourself hitting that uh that wall basically then just carry over to something you feel confident about and then move back to it and if you can't move back to it in a uh, reasonable time frame and get it then pull some reference look at some poses from uh, somebody else that you know a lot of times I, I think that when I when I do these poses or these illustrations a lot of times I'm remembering a certain shot from a comic anyways 
So sometimes I can literally zero in and go, oh, you know what? I remember seeing that similar um, pose or, or composition in such and such book. You know, it's, I don't always remember the books, but I can usually remember the artists. Um, like to me, this almost thinks, makes me think of something I've probably seen uh, in, a, you know, in a Jim Lee book or whatever. And the, the good thing about Jim Lee stuff is there's just so many titles out there, obviously, that you're going to find the reference. Uh, same thing with like David Finch's work. He's got so many books out there that, you know, you're going to be able to find some good res you know, resource material, obviously, because he's got so many poses and does a lot of those uh, intense splash pages with just a lot of characters. So just like that, you know, I'm getting like the sense of the upshot going, hiding some of that torso, moving the lat down a little bit. But again, I'm trying to like work through this with what I know and then hopefully not hit those major stumbling blocks that stop me from moving forward in this. But if I work through this in iterations and I, you know, I can kind of see it culminate together, come together and you know, piece it together and figure it out versus, you know, me getting overly excited and trying to draw a really cool arm or something, you know, which I've been known to do. I'll sit there and draw the arm all out, get it looking good. And I'm like, yeah, I like that arm. And all of a sudden I struggle on the torso. It's like, I got to disperse that creative energy through the whole thing. I think is a, you know, better, uh, smarter way to work for this stuff. Probably shadow right here. Just block that in. It kind of makes sense, I guess. But yeah, something like that, and then I'm wanting to put a cape on him, but that wasn't part of the illustration, so I'm not just going to throw that in there, turn it into Superman or something. But, um, again, if we just take this now and just work through here, and then we figure out, okay, are these really boring modern buildings? You know, if they are, then we can just do this stuff where it's pretty easy to trim these out because they're, I don't know, they're, they're kind of boring, right? You just do different window patterns. You don't want to be too overly simple about it. Like you can show a divide here or a, you know, this could be like an elevator or something and you could do like some ovals and some different shading here. You know, you can really mix it up. It doesn't all have to be so boring and uh, overly repetitive. And the way you render it too in color, it does a lot. And then you put the little buildings on the top, little, little details, whatever glares through there, whatever. Um, but I, the main thing I think at this stage is more the, the scale. So I'm trying to think about, you know, what's the scale that I want? Obviously I want the focus to be on the hero, you know, and I think that's already done. And then we say, you know, what's the hero designed like? You know, you put different design elements in there, you know, whoever this character is. But um, one thing I recommend, I, I just, uh, referred or not referred recommended this to a student that submitted their work through one of my courses was uh, they were trying to get their character to look a little bit better and the first thing I noticed is the overall character looked pretty cool they just needed a little bit more of the I don't know I'll say negative positive dark to light effect through the suit design so you do these cool designs on your character it could be really any sort of shapes that you can you know think of and you just keep playing around with these different shapes but a big part that I think makes it look really cool is just, you know, darkening certain areas to where it stands out a lot better. It pops, you know, just like your sh your light and shadow does so much for your characters. Um, you know, designing your suit elements where they really pop. Somebody that comes to mind here for this is uh, Brett Booth. He does an excellent job at really showing the transition from the light to dark in the suit designs. And uh, does it in an interesting rendering style that I really, really like. So I'm um, sure you know about Brett Booth. But if not, check out his work and see what I mean there. He does some really neat uh, suit designs. And, and well, and the suit designs are generally set characters, right? But it's the way he renders them that makes it really pop. And the way he utilizes those shapes and forms to uh, enhance the characters. But yeah, a lot of times you can make your characters look a lot cooler just by the way that you choose to render the darks and lights. So I'll just keep that in mind. Again, I'll just throw this in rather quickly. Just to get an idea going. Okay. 
I don't think you can see I'm really fighting the urge to like zoom in and start doing this. Um, really, I think that the longer you can stay pulled out from the work, especially digitally, but even traditionally, um, you know, like uh, people always compare the two and say, well, you know, uh, I don't know, like traditional is the way to go. And, and it is, but they're both great. But it's like, um, you know, like with digital, you're cheating or something. And the more I do it, the more I realize they're one and the same. Like with my traditional work, I have I have all these magnifying glasses, especially as I'm, I don't know, my vision's starting to be a little bit poor as I get older. And but I always did. I always had uh, my magnifying glasses. Anyways, I just feel myself using them more now. So it's really the same thing. You know, like when I when I get to a certain level with my art, I start zeroing in on them with those uh, magnifying glasses and really detailing them. So same thing. Make sure that be the opposite. I'll go with it. Same thing for like uh, digital. Try to stay back as far as possible. Once you got a good sense of the overall design and it's all feeling good and working, then pull in tight. Um, and this is really the way you should work anyways because like when you're working with a um, a client, this this is so helpful. You know, that you can send these over, these iterations. And you know, a lot of times they might think that you put hours into it, but you know that since you worked from a distance and did a lot, all this loose sketching and build up that it only took you 15, 20 minutes or whatever it took you. Uh, that is so important, especially if something goes south, like you'll really thank yourself by doing that uh, so that you're not like, you know, mad at the client. I spent days on that. I need to be paid for my time, you know, which can happen. But um, generally, if you fly through your rough sketches and your changes, it's not the end of the world. All right, I'm running out of ideas for buildings. And, and for buildings, somebody asked us the other day, like, you know, how do you get ideas for buildings? And um, I can't remember what I said. I said just like some methods I take for cutting into it and making changes and trying not to be overly repetitive. But realistically, you know, just, just look at somebody that does some good buildings and then, you know, lay in your groundwork and then look at their stuff. And then you don't got to feel like you're cheating if you feel that way at all. I'm just saying, like, if you drop it in, um, your basic perspective and your composition on your own, then, you know, copying the way they do windows isn't, isn't some big deal. I don't know. I don't think any of it's a big deal, really. You just have to learn from people that are doing it better. Um, and I get different artists I look at that at any given time. Like, one of the, the ways that I feel like I'm kind of doing these buildings a little too basic, but... I can think of artists that do it basic, but the way they pull it together looks really cool. And one that comes to mind there is J. Scott Campbell. He'll do build buildings that look pretty simplistic, but I don't know. He, you know, he does it in just the right way. And I think what it does too is if you keep the buildings a little bit more simplified, without trying to go too crazy on them, then the character shines a bit more. So I think that's what makes me think of his work. Uh, check it out. See what you think. But but yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to get out there is that because he chooses where to really um, put all that glorious detail, the, the characters stand out better. And he's got a little bit more of an airy kind of Disney-esque vibe anyways. So maybe that kind of, uh, you know, complements that. But yeah, so just like that, you know, we've got a composition. I go here and keep throwing this in, but you get the general idea. I would just fill in a little more, a little more. And like I said, I would add any kind of little effect. So if I wanted some rolling smoke, that gives another dynamic. I would probably use that to hide any areas that I wasn't digging too much uh, in my illustration. But this is about the stage, like say I gave him some power or something like that. Looks like a powered character. This is about the stage where I would jump in and and now tighten up but i feel like there's enough of that idea there that i've got a pretty good grasp of what it needs to look like i would check it from a distance yeah i think i like that one that's one that i would probably carry through to a finished piece of art but again as far as composition goes let me just kind of do a finishing uh idea here close this out sorry i haven't used sketchbook pro in a while great software and it's free by the way Okay, so, you know, if I was to look at this compositionally, I've got something like this going. Decided to shift it to a three-point perspective, which all of that 
guides the eye up, right? All these lines direct us up to the character. Um, Shape-wise, you know, an easy to read silhouette of the character. It doesn't get much easier than that. Sometimes you don't have the character's limbs all the way out, you know, outward like this. Um, but we do have the leg crossing over, but it still reads pretty easily. Like you could picture that if you silhouetted this, you would still have a good idea of what's going on there. That's important. We could also use the clouds to come inward and point down towards our character. I think that would make more sense than going straight across anyways with the clouds. It would look a bit silly. So I would bring these clouds in and down. And all of a sudden now we've got this, this kind of like, you know, V shape pointing towards our character, to our, towards our hero. Uh, and that's really it. I mean, I guess you could even say these are a compositional element. I don't know if they help or hurt it. I do, I do like throwing in uh, spherical shapes to break up all these rectangular shapes that I did for those boring looking buildings. So I guess in that regard, that's a good idea. And the birds, well, they're not really, comp I don't know. Could those be a compositional element? I don't know. I just like throwing birds in the background. My mommy taught me to draw them when I was little, so. All right, anyways, there you go, folks. Hopefully that's been uh, informative for you and shown you a thing or two. I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below. Keep in mind that I have courses on my own site if you want to learn more. And then I also have content on Udemy. I'll make sure all the links are in the description box below. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.